Hi, it's Robin. Just to follow up to that last video about the C128 and the various bugs. There were a number of questions there and some observations. I'll just address a few of them. One bug I missed is that the play command is actually out of tune. So thanks to Barcoboy1 for pointing out this one. If I have my guitar tuner app up here and I play a C note with the play command, it actually plays a D. If I change that to play a D, it actually plays an E. So the C128 with the original ROMs is out of tune. It plays a whole tone sharper than it should. And that was resolved in the upgraded ROMs. Also, quite a few people were very interested in that volume bug. One person suggested it's just ignoring the first characters, so try playing a zero in front. But that's just the same volume as five. It's also suggested that with this limb of nine, maybe it's just a single character. There's nine, and maybe it's hexadecimal, so we'll try A. But it ends up interpreting that as the note A, so that doesn't work. And it was also suggested that maybe just use the characters after the numbers, which are the colon, semicolon, and so on, maybe it would interpret this as volume 10 and 11 and so on. So we'll try that. But no, you get an illegal quantity error. So that volume bug is quite persistent. And before we get to the main subject for today, I got a parcel in the mail here. As always, I put an index each episode, so if you want to skip ahead to the next section, just look for that index in the description below. Okay, so I'll just open this up here. And what is it? There we go. Realms of Quest 5. This is the VIC-20 game that I reviewed the digital version of a while ago. And here the physical copy has arrived for the Commodore VIC-20. 32K memory expansion required. Five and a quarter inch discs. Joystick supported. There's the back of the box. Double-sided games. It's really a very nice box. And inside is a cloth map. Very nice. And here's the game discs. Side A is Riveria. Side B, Underworld. Side C is the Bestiary. Side D is the Populous. There's the manual. And I showed you the PDF version of it there. All kinds of nice charts and excellent manual. It includes this little coin. Realms of Quest 5 for Greater Riveria. Physical copy of this is currently sold out, but the digital copy is available. But if you are interested in the physical game, head to Double Sided Games website. I'll put a link in the description below. Let them know through the contact form that you would like to buy a copy and they'll maybe they'll do another run of the uh, boxed edition. So today I just wanted to look at something here in the C128 system guide that's included with the Commodore 128. This isn't the main subject, but it's got this funny color section here in the middle. Introducing the Commodore 128 shows the assembly line and so on. It's got a bunch of odd pictures here, such as an extra pair of hands for the busy executive. If you look there, that busy executive only has a single cable running from her C128. Presumably the monitor cord, I don't know. But the computer doesn't seem to have power <laughs> or any storage or anything. Here's this fella, presumably on a boat. Ship to shore telecommunicating made easy with your Commodore computer and modem. And yet the C128 has absolutely nothing plugged into it except the modem. No video, no power. <laughs> so uh, I don't think he's doing much communicating there. 
And here's the Commodore 128N student heading for class. And there's a fellow with the C-128 under his arm. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do when he gets there without his power supply, monitor, disk drive, or anything else. Maybe that's on his other arm that we can't see here. Off in the background looks like somebody else lugging a computer to class as well. And one last one, the budget finally balanced thanks to Commodore 128. And here is a C-128 with no monitor, no power supply, no disk drive. And it doesn't even fit in this hutch properly here. But somehow it balanced the budget. Thanks Commodore 128. But what I really want to show you today was on page 370 here. It's actually a list of all these escape codes that the Commodore 128 has. And this could have gone in my little known features of the last video. But I think there's enough here that we could take a, a whole episode to look at some of these. Basically, these are all escape codes that add extra screen editor functions to the C128 that were sorely missing in the C64, the VIC-20, the PAT, all the previous Commodore computers. They're really quite good, and I think a lot of people don't know about them. The C128 really is an excellent computer for the hobbyist programmer. It had loads of new features specifically for programmers. So we'll just look at a few of these today. So the C128 actually has a proper escape key here. Some Commodore 64 programs use this back arrow as an escape. If you programmed on the C64, you probably appreciated the screen editor to a degree, because it was actually a lot better than most of the competitors' computers at the time. But there were some frustrations. For example, you're writing a program and you go print hello. Okay, so you write a little program like that and you decide that actually you want to say hello there. So you have to go shift, insert, insert, three, four, five, six, make those spaces. And then you can start typing in. And if you had typed in extra ones and then you decide, oh no, I want cursor down or cursor up, the computer goes all crazy like this. So on the C64, there was one escape if you were bewildered by that. You could hit Shift Return, and that gets you out without entering the line in memory. And then you could fix it up like so. But on the C128, there's an escape code that solves this problem. If you press Escape A, it goes into Insert Mode, and you just type, and it automatically inserts for you you can escape from that mode with escape C. And then it returns to normal operation, which is like an overwrite rather than an insert. Okay, another one is if we just fill the screen with a bunch of characters. If you move to the bottom right corner of any area and hit escape B, it actually defines a window with this being the bottom right corner of the screen. Now if we cursor down, you see, we've actually created a window here, and it's treating that as if that's the whole screen, that window that we defined. And we can actually define the top corner of it with Escape T. And now, if I scroll down, you'll see it's moving an even smaller window. This is the top left corner here. Actually, if you hit Home, it now goes up into that top corner. So that's neat. That certainly has some application. The only thing is I don't know how to make the window full screen again. <laughs> so that seems like a, a drawback if there is no way. If anybody knows, I actually googled around a bit for it and couldn't find any solution. That's not in the manual. So the only way I found out was to hit stop restore to return to the full screen window. Another one, by the way, I'm doing, this is the command catalog. I'm just using that to quickly fill the screen to give some examples. If you want to delete a line, it's just escape D. And you see it pulls everything below it up. It doesn't actually erase it from the directory or from your basic listing. It just deletes it on the screen. So here we can delete escape D. Another one, if for some reason you don't like that cursor flashing, when you're trying to do screenshots, you can go Escape E, and the cursor becomes solid. And Escape F, starts
starts the cursor flashing again. So C128 supports the Control G bell, and you can suppress that with Escape H. Now Control G won't ring the bell, and Escape G enables the bell ringing again. You can also insert lines with Escape I. Escape K jumps to the end of a line and J to the beginning of a line. So that's handy. If you're writing a basic program line that's very long. So if you have a long program line like this, Escape K goes to the end of the logical line. So each one of these is called a physical line. One, two, three physical lines but it is one logical line. So if we're in the middle of the line, if we go escape J, it goes to the beginning of the logical line and escape K goes to the end. Now, if I create a long program here, 30, 40. So now I have a long listing here. The default behavior is for the screen to scroll like so to make room for the extra text. If you do escape M, it actually disables scrolling. So if we list down here, it wraps around the screen. It behaves a little bit oddly sometimes, but overall you can see there. List, line 10, and then 90 comes around at the top again. Escape L enables scrolling again. I mentioned already that when you're in quote mode, after you've typed a quote, then if you use things like the cursor keys, instead shows these characters, which are useful, but sometimes frustrating. So escape O cancels quote mode, and you can start to cursor around again. It also cancels as reverse mode. If you hold down control and press nine, that turns reverse on which makes all the characters appear in reverse, like a space becomes a solid block. Again, Escape O lets you escape from that. And also, if you're in Insert Mode, that's a lot like Quote Mode, Escape O also exits from that. So it cancels any of those modes. A few more here, Escape P clears to the beginning of the line, so from here, and escape Q goes to the end of the line. And this one I find especially useful. For example, I might want to go open 15, comma 8, comma 15. Say I want to issue a disk command because uh, I don't have Jiffy DOS in this machine. And then I can't remember what my directory name is. So I'll do a directory down here. So say I want to change directory to C64. I want to do a catalog again, but I want to preserve this command up here so I don't have to type the whole open 15 sequence again. But I don't like how cluttered all this is. Escape at will clear from the cursor position the whole bottom of the screen. There. And now I can do a catalog. That's nice and clean. And again, escape at. I can delete that, but I can preserve these commands I have up here. You can also scroll the whole screen up or down. Escape W scrolls the screen downwards and Escape V scrolls it upwards. But notice it doesn't actually store what has scrolled off the screen. It's lost. If we scroll the screen back down, whatever had scrolled off the screen is lost. But that can be handy as well if you want to preserve some text on the screen. And the final set of instructions involves this tab key. The C128 also has a real tab key. And by default, if you press it, it goes every eight characters. Those are the default tabs. And then the last line of the screen. If you hit Escape Z, it clears all those tabs. And then tab immediately jumps just to the end of the screen. So we can set any tab we like with Control X. So there, we've just set the one tab now. 
And if we hit tab, it goes to that one position and then to the end of the screen. And we can set another tab here, control X. And now it'll stop in the two places and then the end of the screen. And if we want to restore all the regular tabs, then it's escape Y. And then the tab is every eight characters again. If your tab key is broken for some reason, control I will do the same thing. Oh, and really just one more. If you hold down shift and commodore key, you toggle between the uppercase and the lowercase modes. You can disable that feature with a control K and now it won't work. And control L re-enables it. Okay, maybe not the most interesting subject to everyone, but I actually found those extra features really handy on the Commodore 128. And I think a lot of people just don't know about them at all. Thanks to all the new subscribers. The, that last Commodore 128 video was a surprising success. And I'm right up near 5,000 subscribers now, which is amazing. Thank you to every one of you for subscribing, for watching, for your comments. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you next time.